Often, at times, the image of a famous individual can outrun their true nature, whether it be due to modern media or the game of telephone played by history. The following 10 people are not at all who you probably think they are. Amazing! Number 10. John Lennon. One of the most influential singer-songwriters of the past hundred years, John Lennon was a peace icon. He didn't just sing songs about love and unity, but was involved in various pro-peace political movements and paid for billboards with anti-war slogans on them in London and New York. In March of 1969, he and Yoko, his wife, spent an entire week in bed to protest global conflict. Though it was unclear how this would solve anything, as most people, myself included, spend weeks in bed to no avail. While coming across as a stark pacifist, opposing sending troops overseas, he was apparently not opposed to punching people and had somewhat of a violent streak. He even once stated in an interview that, when he was younger, I was a hitter, I couldn't express myself, and I hit. I fought men, and I hit women. He does not appear to have ever fully grown out of this attitude. The reason Yoko Ono would accompany him to band practices, one of the reasons often cited for the breakup of the Beatles, was because he forced her to. He wanted her under his constant supervision, even making her accompany him to the bathroom. One person he did not care to see much of was his son Julian, and he was absent for most of his life. Basically, deep down, he wasn't much of the good guy we're led to believe he was. Number 9. Dr. Seuss if you were born in America, there's a 25% chance that the first book you ever read was written by Theodore Geisel, known more widely as Dr. Seuss. He wrote over 60 children's books, and simply hearing his name no doubt takes one back to simpler times of childhood. To begin with, he was not actually a doctor, but unless you plan on writing whimsical children's stories, you probably shouldn't just throw doctor on your resume. What's more interesting is that Dr. Seuss did not actually like children at all, and once said that, they terrify me. In an interview, his wife explained that he was always wondering, what might they do next? What might they ask next? Evidently, children's irrational behaviour was something he didn't enjoy dealing with. Dr. Seuss was also an American propagandist during World War II, and drew extremely racist caricatures of Japanese people to rally public support for the war. Number 8. Michael Jordan Widely regarded by most as the best basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan is a towering figure in the world of sports. The man has his own brand of shoes, and can be seen selling undershirts in commercials now that he's retired from dominating a whole sport for years. Perhaps most importantly, he starred in the 1996 film Space Jam. While most might think that he appears to be a nice person, MJ actually happens to be a massive jerk by all accounts. It's been noted that he would throw teammate Bill Cartwright intentionally bad passes, and then complain about how he would miss them. He would also scream, You're a loser! You've always been a loser, at Rodney McRae, when they were on opposite sides of a scrimmage. When he moved to the Wizards, he regularly reduced Kwame Brown to tears during practice. The most damning evidence of him not being the nicest person in the world, however, is his Hall of Fame acceptance speech, which is often described as the most bizarre and petty ever given. In it, he blasted everyone from his high school coach and teammate, his college coach, his college roommate, and even his own kids. In perhaps the pettiest move of all, the multi-millionaire also complained that he had been charged for a ticket to the event. Number 7. Steve Jobs This man is seen by many as one of the most important visionaries of the century, a business icon credited with revolutionising the tech industry. He is a household name, on par with the likes of legends such as Henry Ford. He is the reason hipsters have bought eight nearly identical phones. Steve Jobs was also not someone you would really want as a co-worker. During his time in charge at Pixar, he fired employees without any notice. When someone did eventually ask for the standard two weeks notice, he agreed, but said that the notice is retroactive from two weeks ago. He was also known to be a general jerk, and would harass potential employees during interviews, reportedly asking one, how old were you when you lost your virginity? And how many times have you taken LSD? When the interviewee attempted to respond, Jobs often made turkey noises at them. Go pluck yourself, Steve. Number six, 
Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is perhaps the most famous musician of all time. His music has been listened to and performed for the past 200 years. He began composing music at the age of 5, and he was playing in front of European royalty by the age of 17. Mozart created over 600 works of music, and has had an unparalleled influence on classical music. Few are unaware, however, that Mozart had a bizarre interest in faecal matter. So much so, in fact, that there is an entire Wikipedia page titled Mozart and Scatology, filled with expert historians and scientists analysing all the weird references he would make to poop in his letters and lesser known songs. For example, one letter he wrote to a cousin contained the poem, Well, I wish you had a good night, but first in your bed and make it burst. Sleep soundly, my love, into your mouth, my ass, you'll shove. He even wrote a musical piece which translates to Kiss My Ass. If you're like Mozart, make sure to stick around and click the video we show at the end. Number 5. Mother Teresa. If you look at most lists of best people who ever lived, chances are Mother Teresa will make an appearance. Most hail her as the pinnacle of human kindness, as she even won the Nobel Peace Prize. Most of us were also probably taught that she was a true humanitarian, a kind-spirited and charitable missionary who aided the sick and organised charity work. However, you might want to rethink what you know about her, because the truth is that she doesn't exactly deserve the world's love and admiration. Let me explain. Firstly, the houses for the dying that she ran tended to have appalling living conditions, and she often denied painkillers to patients, and there was a disturbing shortage of medical care, systematic diagnosis, and a severe lack of nutrition available for patients. In fact, this is rather hypocritical given that she accepted advanced western medical treatment for her heart condition. What's particularly disturbing though, is that her charitable foundation missionaries of charity accepted grants from dubious political contacts like brutal dictators and given the poor conditions at her aid houses likely siphoned off millions of donations which were meant to be spent on helping the sick and helpless. It's likely this money actually went into the coffers of the Catholic Church. In fact, she even admitted once that I'm not a social worker, I don't do it for this reason, I do it for Christ, I do it for the church. In short, she wasn't a humanitarian, she was working to expand the Catholic faith. Her allegiance wasn't with the sick, but with the church. Number 4. Elvis Presley The king of rock and roll is an instantly recognisable cultural icon. He had the girls fainting in the audience before the Beatles, and became an international sex symbol thanks to his high energy erotic dancing and womanising image. This sex symbol also met his wife when she was 14, and he was 24. He also groped a 17 year old, who happened to be the president of his fan club. Elvis was also known to throw pyjama parties with teenage girls, where he would teach them how to style their hair and put on mascara. According to Elvis's stepmother, the womanizer also had a long affair with actor Nick Adams. Had more people been aware of the pyjama parties, maybe they would have also been able to deduce that he wasn't entirely heterosexual. Number 3. Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi was the leader of the Indian independence movement, an independent movement that, unlike a lot of others, didn't involve trying to kill lots of people. Gandhi is world renowned for this non-violence that inspired others, such as Martin Luther King Jr. Gandhi was also a huge pervert. He frequently bathed with women who were much younger than him, and slept naked with his 18 year old niece. He told her that it was the ultimate test of their purity. Despite all of this, Gandhi claimed to have lived a chaste life, which is obviously rather suspicious. His relationship with modern medicine, however, makes these incidents look harmless by comparison. Although he let his wife die of pneumonia because he was against the use of penicillin, he himself accepted to use modern drugs to save himself from malaria just two years later. Number 2. Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo da Vinci is known for basically everything you can be known for. He was an inventor, painter, sculptor, architect, scientist, musician, mathematician. He was an all-round polymath. He was also, technically, a criminal, whose famous anatomical drawings were only made possible with crimes. 
At the time, dissection was totally illegal, unless you were a doctor, which happened to be one of those few things that da Vinci wasn't. It is thought that da Vinci used grave robbers to obtain the bodies he used, and he had to keep his research secret, lest he be discovered. Perhaps you should consider claiming that you did what you did for the sake of scientific posterity the next time you're caught stealing something. Number 1. Mark Zuckerberg the creator of Facebook, Mark inspired the movie The Social Network, and is quite a rich person, to say the least. In short, he is the penultimate entrepreneurial programmer. Zuckerberg is not, however, a particularly noteworthy programmer. You might be surprised to find out that he majored in psychology, and is only ranked in the third level on Top Coder a website where programmers rank their skills. The initial version of Facebook was not very sophisticated, and succeeded more on its premise than its remarkable code. For comparison, Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft, wrote the loader for Microsoft Basic on a flight to Albuquerque, on a piece of paper, not a computer. There's a pretty widespread consensus of Mark's relatively low programming skills. Just read this feed on Kiora, and you'll get the picture. Were you surprised about the truth behind any of these people? Make sure to let us know in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe. Oh, and click on this video about poop if you're anything like Mozart.